Today, we conclude our, our series on the book of Proverbs, and then we begin our VBS. And our VBS theme is Jesus is the light of the world, so you can sure enough bet that we will be talking about Jesus being that light of the world for the next couple of weeks. This morning, though, before we begin, I want to uh, invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. We are going to go to Proverbs chapter 2. And we're going to be reading the very first four verses together. Proverbs chapter four, excuse me, chapter two, verses one through four. There it is. Nope, this is not the right... um, Hold on. Yeah, but that's not the right slide. No, go to the next one. We're having issues again. Scratch, scratch the. Uh, don't don't use that. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, too many issues going on. There are too many things happening that sometimes. Make you go, hmm. Uh, Because I do know I did save the right presentation on the right slide in the right places. But there's something about today's message that somebody here needs to hear that somebody doesn't want you to hear. So having seen this glitch before, I invite you to bow your heads with me before we read God's word. Father God, we are grateful for this opportunity. We are grateful for this moment in time that we have to open your word and to dive in. So I pray, Father, that you will... Keep us safe. Open our minds and our hearts to hear you this morning. Lord, may we see you through this scripture as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. It says, my son, let me pause here for a minute. Whenever I heard the words, my son, come out of my dad's mouth, it was a deep sigh. On my part, much more so on his part, my son. I knew that when I heard those words that I knew my ears needed to be in tune. You know, to be in tune today, kids are in tuned to a screen. I grew up in a time where we had to tune the antenna to the right frequency so the, the screen could be clear. Some of you are laughing, some of you remember, some of you are saying amen. I don't want those times back again. I like my clear, high-def picture. However, to be in tune you must means that you are able to see clearly. And so here it starts out, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart, Heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. Let me pause there. Did you notice the amount of times the word if comes up? If. 
You receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to, your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. It's interesting here that the word receive in the um, Hebrew talks about possession. Do you know when the first time the word, this word is used in the Old Testament? Probably not, because in the Hebrew, most of you, if not all of you, well, maybe not Rick, but most of you have not studied Hebrew before. But the word Hebrew, the word, excuse me, the word here that is used in, in, in our English language to receive, if you receive my words, is the same word that is used for the word take. If you go back with me to Genesis chapter 2. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of the ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. See, I don't know if that gives you goosebumps or chills. It does for me. Let me illustrate it this way. Peggy and Regine, may I borrow you for a minute? Can you come forward, please? You are not in trouble. I promise you that. Let's come up here. Now, here's Adam. And God saw Adam, and he caused him to go into a deep sleep. Don't, don't, don't close your eyes. <laughs> And he took a rib from him and held it in his hand. He possessed it. And he took that rib and he fashioned it and placed it onto the woman. And then he brought the woman to the man. To take, there's another part of the Bible that says, and, and he took her to be his wife. Thank you. <laughs> to take is a symbol of intimate possession. To take and to hear what, what Solomon is saying here in this instance in the book of Proverbs, that when you receive, when you take my words, when you take the commands that I'm giving you, when, I'm, when you take the instructions, it's synonymous to receiving because you internalize it and it becomes a part of you. So it's not just, Steve, take my Bible. He took my Bible. We often, thank you, we often look at receiving as a formal, as a form of an action that is superficial and not intimate. Not in this case. He's saying if you receive my words and you internalize it, there's another word in, 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 in the Hebrew language. If you open to Deuteronomy chapter 6, Verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse 7. It says here, 
I hear you leafing through your Bible. I'll, again, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, it says, You shall teach them what? Diligently. You know, that's, that's our translation. Dr. Mosby, what does it mean to teach diligently as a teacher? Over and over. I got it, Dad. Right? I got it, Dr. Mosby. I heard you a thousand times already. Isn't that the reaction we get when we start to emphasize and to teach diligently to our kids? But this is exactly what it says here. However, the Hebrew has a different word, and it means to inculcate. That's an old archaic word that means to pierce it through, get it through your thick skull. Put it in your head. Don't forget it. You know, in the old days, you had you put, you put a bow around your finger so you wouldn't forget kind of the thing. To teach diligently means that you internalize it. It becomes intimate. It becomes a part of who you are. So now when we read this verse, we can apply all of those synonyms. My son, if you, if you internalize my words, if you take what I tell you and what I instruct you in such a way that it becomes a part of you and you treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. The book of Psalms has, has several Psalms where it says, Lord, incline your ear towards me. In other words, you bend, o- bend towards what I'm saying so you can hear me. And here's Solomon saying the same thing for you, not, not just to internalize it, but to lean towards it. Do you know what happens Steve, you're a black belt in karate. If you start leaning one way or the other, what are the chances of you have fallen over? Pretty slim, right? If you're leaning one way, the chances are of you falling that way are slim. If I'm leaning a certain way, my chances are falling. I'm out of balance, right? In order for you to stand straight, you need to have balance. But here, this doesn't apply to this particular text at all because when you lean towards this teaching, you're always trying to fall always in that direction. You're going to be true to God's word. You're going to do exactly as it is that you're being instructed. Let's continue. Yes, he's recognizing. If you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. So not only do you have to internalize this, you need to cry out. To cry out is not just, Lord, can you get grant me this wish or this desire. It is to actually say, Lord, I don't understand this. Help me. Or I am in a world of trouble. It's you crying out, verbalizing, putting into words exactly what you've internalized that you don't understand. Let me put it this way. When I was younger, and boy, was I disciplined. My parents would say, "You, when you get to my age, you will understand. And I really didn't understand until I got, became a father. There are times when we don't understand even those that 
Even, even those things that have been asked of us to do. Right? When you're a young person, why can't I do this? Let me, let me put something out there really easy for you, most of you to understand. When you're younger, you want to do things, a lot of things. And then some of you may have gotten the reply, well, we don't do that because it's Sabbath. Or we don't go to this place because we are Christians or Seventh-day Adventists, more specifically. We don't do this because it doesn't fall in line with our conduct and with our instructions that God has given us. But yet, we don't fully understand those instructions until we cry out, until we say, hey, Lord, I don't get this. Help me. It says, and lift up your voice for understanding. If, verse 4, if you seek her as silver. I was like, what in the world? Who wants silver? Who would rather have gold than silver? Especially in today's price for an ounce. Silver per ounce today, $24 and change. Per ounce. Gold, on the other hand, $1,927 per ounce. Who wants gold? So why in the world did Solomon say, if you seek her as silver? Does that mean that you have to be satisfied with less than the best? No. See, back in those times, silver was much harder to come by than gold. To a point that only royalty had silver. Because it was so rare, even though gold is far more valuable. In the Egyptian times, the pharaohs would have silver jewelry because they're the only ones who had the resources to send somebody to find them. And so when Solomon, being the wisest man, lived in that, during that time where the Egyptian empire was at its high zenith, he says, when you search for her as silver, in other words, you're going out intentionally and you're going after this thing because that's your mission. Because it's hard to find. Flip with me over to the book of Luke. Chapter 11. Verse 9. It says, Luke chapter 11, verse 9. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who seeks, who asks, receives, and everyone who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. What is interesting is the parable that comes next to it, right? How many of you here have ever woken up a neighbor and asked them for a favor because you had something that they ha you knew they had, but you couldn't get it because of the time of day? A cup of sugar, flour, gas, lawnmower, you fill in that blank. 
Jesus is now tell, telling a parable is how many of you go to your neighbor and you wake him up in the middle of the night and you ask him, hey, I got company coming over. Can you lend me some eggs? And then the reply is, man, everybody's asleep. Let's go back to bed. But you keep nagging that neighbor until he gets up and he gives it to you. Jesus is comparing us, those that are looking for something, to seek him. That's what searching for silver is. Continue to nag God for him to reveal his purpose in your life. That's why he says, if you ask, it will be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, it will be opened. But he's not talking about material treasure. Because the context of this, mind you, back then in the, the Bible, the way it was written, did not have chapters and verses. So what else do we find here in chapter 11? Very simple. So he said to them, when you pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Prayer. When we look at wisdom and when we look at what Solomon is, is, is saying here. When we search out for her, now this is talking about wisdom and its value. One of the ways that we do that is through prayer. Diligent prayer. You are intentional in your prayer walk with God for him to reveal his will for your life. You are intentional in what you're asking for. Lord, I don't get this. Why do I need to fill in the blank? Why do I need to return a tithe? Why do I need to keep the Sabbath? And I put need there in parentheses. You don't have to do anything. You can do whatever you want. But I would beg to differ in when it comes to if you want God's plan and will revealed in your life, you must lean towards him. Lean towards his teachings. Lean to what he's recommending you do. Even if you fall, you're falling on his side. When you search... Because why? Verse 5. Check this out. Then, if there's an if, then there's a then. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. I had to, I had to chuckle when I read this and find the knowledge of God. You know, the fear of the Lord is not respect as we have always been taught, oh no, the fear of the Lord is to revere, is to have a respect, is to, is to be reverent in front of the Lord. Mm, no. The fear of the Lord is obedience because you have searched him out, because you have learned his teachings, because he has taught you which way to go. And when you obey him, you will understand it's in the doing that we comprehend God's will, not in the theory. That is the fear of the Lord. It's not easy sometimes to obey. I get it. It is not easy. Because in order for me to obey, I have to give up my will. I have to give up my desire. I have to give up what I want in order for God to fulfill his want 
in me. That's why the fear of the Lord is difficult. Because it's you obeying God's command to you. And for you, Steve, it may be different than Danielle, than you, Cyrus, than you, Sharon, than anyone. And you, Regine, Rihanna, Alnado, Glenn, all of us, God calls us to do different things at different times because there's no set uniformity in the body of Christ because the gifts are various. And you all have different things to bring to the table. However, God's will for your life begins with you understanding that you must obey in order to live God's plan. That's the hard part. That's the challenge. Because I have to give up my will. My will. Go back to Proverbs. I'm going to jump down. Verses 6 through all the way through 20 talks about two different types of circumstances you can find yourself in if you don't listen. I'm not going to spend time on this. But I do want to, I want to jump down all the way to verse 20. These two These two circumstances, though, when you follow, God provides, in a, in a nutshell. When you don't follow, remember the illustration I made in the very beginning of the sermon with a husband and a wife. The worst sin to a humankind is the rupture of family. Because the family is the first thing God instituted after the Sabbath. He's the first thing that God gave as a blessing to man. But here, it's not good for man to be alone. When you don't follow the counsel, you run the risk of committing adultery. And there's tons of what that is here. But let's jump down to verse 20. So why do we listen? So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. See this, please don't misunderstand righteousness as you being good enough. You will never be good enough. You can never do enough to earn your salvation. But it does keep you in the path of righteousness from means not doing evil. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the, faith, the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. See, this morning... What are you struggling with to obey? What of God's instructions have you, has God been whispering in your ear that you need to follow? And for each and every one of you, it's something different. But that's okay. We're not all on the same level of spirituality. We wouldn't be a church if we were. We all have our different struggles. We all have our different temptations. But nevertheless, we do have wisdom. We do have instruction. We do have a promise. But you need to search her out. You need to take hold of God's instructions, internalize it, make it part of you. Live according to that with the intentionality of going out, seeking her out. But what about if I hit a roadblock? It's okay. 
continue to knock. Continue to ask. Continue to seek. Because it will, you will find it. The door will be open to you. And you will understand when you obey. That is a promise of the Almighty, not mine. That's what the Bible says. Is anybody here struggling with something? You don't have to tell me. Is anybody here struggling with something that God has revealed to them? I need you to change this in your own personal life. Is there somebody that would like to say, Lord, I need you to help me to lean in your direction? Thank you, Giovanni. We all do. You know, we should not be afraid to admit that we are struggling with something in our spirituality. Not here. This is the church. A church of broken people coming to God for strength. Coming to God for wisdom. Coming to God for guidance. I pray that as you continue to search out God's will for your life, may you lean in the direction of his teaching. May you fall on his side. <clears throat> Obey, and you will understand the fear of the Lord. May God bless you.